Okay, okay, so here is February's design and a couple of things I wanted to tell you about tracing. What I like to do is take the pattern that's in reverse that I send you and print it out directly onto the paper side of freezer paper. There's a shiny side, that's the waxy side, and then the paper side. And then I iron that to the back of my fabric. And that way when I trace my design, the fabric and the pattern stay together, they don't wiggle around, and it stabilizes the fabric and it makes it much easier to trace. If you don't want to use freezer paper, you totally don't have to. You can just use a light box or a window and tape down the design and then tape your fabric on top of that. So I went ahead and stitched this one out with a Valdani. And now I'm going to stitch it again because I wanted to go over some of the stitches with you. And so I thought this version I'm going to switch up a little bit. So I'll show you what I did. I traced it using the Pilot Friction Pen, which is the thing I love to, to trace with because it will disappear with the heat of an iron. And then I just got a little fun. So I used some different uh, color pencils. These are just ones you buy at, at uh, Michael's or anywhere. And you know, pick out what colors really appeal to you. These, um, I'll, these numbers here are on the pattern. So or in the email that I sent you. So if you do want to use the same colors, there you go. So what I did is I left the freezer paper on the back because now it's much easier to draw on. The fabric doesn't wiggle around. Let me move my light so I don't get quite so much shadow there. And first I did the sun and then the green and then the pink. And then I just kind of went over it with the blue and blocked out the house and just real rough, you know, just colored it in. And the important thing is before you start stitching, because it will rub off as you stitch unless you fix it somehow. And I like to use this um, textile medium. It's colorless extender, jacquard, and a little goes a long way. So you just use a regular old paintbrush and you just paint it on wherever you want the color to stay. Sometimes I've even watered it down just a tiny bit. I was afraid it would make it real stiff um, using it straight, but I use it straight this time and it really isn't that stiff. I think it's gonna be okay. So now I can peel that off and I'm ready to stitch. So the fun part next was picking out the threads. So I went ahead and used some Cosmo threads just because I have a, a nice sampling of different threads to choose from. And these are the threads that I came up with that I'm gonna use. And these were also listed on the email. So if you have any questions on the colors, that's where they are. Okay, so there's just a few little stitches I wanna show you and uh, just to kind of help you on your way. All right, I'll get ready and I'll get back to you in a second. So the first thread I'm gonna start with is the green, and I've decided to do all of the um, stems and stuff and leaves in this green. And wherever there's a solid line, that's a stem stitch. So what you wanna do is start at the end or the edge or corner, never start in the middle. So I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch away and come back up halfway between, so about 16th inch. I'm going to carry my thread on this side because it's a curved line going this way and I want to carry my thread on the same direction as the curve. Okay, the next stitch is just going to be an eighth of an inch and I'm coming back up in that same hole that I just went down in. And you just keep repeating that. I do feel a difference in the fabric with that um, fix the, the fabric extender on there that makes it uh, the color stay. Not too bad, but you can definitely feel a little bit of a difference. It's not quite as smooth as the mode of fabric usually is, but it's still really easy to stitch through and it's worth it if I can have some color on there because I think that's kind of fun. 
Okay, I'll do a little more of this and then we'll move on to a stitch, to a different stitch. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you is if I'm doing a leaf that's this shape, sometimes I like to have it come to a really, really sharp point. And so what I'll do is actually go a few threads past the end of the leaf, come back up in that same hole. So this is just a itty, 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 bitty, 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 bitty stitch like that. And now I'm gonna turn my fabric and I'm going to start going the other direction. So that itty bitty stitch actually forms a really nice sharp point there. So these leaves, what I did is I just filled them in with some running stitches, which is probably the easiest stitch of all, I think. And you don't have to follow exactly like the pattern. You can do your own stitches. You could fill it in with a seed stitch or a fern stitch, but I'm just gonna take some running stitches so you Start at the end of a little stitch and then down and up and down and up. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to come back the other side. And that just gives them a little bit of texture. Now, since this isn't much of a jump from there to this leaf, I'm going to go ahead and make that little jump. I could turn it over and thread my needle under some of those stitches, but I'm not going to. <laughs> but feel free to do that. That's probably a more appropriate way to do it. Okay, I will continue on. So the next little stitch I want to show you is a lazy daisy stitch, and that's what these little tiny leaves are. So you're gonna start at the base where it's connected to the uh, stem and you're going to carry your thread kind of mimicking the shape of that stitch so up and around you take your needle right back in that same hole that you started at the base by the stem you bring your needle up at the tip of the leaf the thread goes under the needle and you pull it away from you don't pull it this way it will close in so you want to pull it away from you and don't pull too tight because you want to leave it as a little loop and then you take the needle down on the other side of the loop to tack it in place. And that is a little lazy daisy stitch. We'll do another one here. Up at the base, your thread goes up and around, back in the base, up at the top, thread under needle, pull and tack. We'll do another one. There we go. I also should mention too, I'm, <laughs> I like to stitch while I'm sitting on my, on my day bed and I cross my legs and use my knee kind of, or this leg as my kind of support under my embroidery. And just to spare you from seeing my legs, I've spread this little quilt that my mom made for me years and years ago, hand quilted, isn't that cute? So it's just a nice little throw quilt. So I thought, well, that looks a lot better than my legs. <laughs> so, okay, and this is the last one here. And, you know, when you're stitching things like this, so my next stitch, I'm going to do these leaves, I'm gonna do these little lazy daisies. So I'm gonna kind of think about where my thread is. And if I start here and go out here, then when I'm finished, my thread's gonna be quite a ways from these. This is just something I think about. So, you know, I might go ahead and just skip down and do this little guy. And and then this one, this one, and then that'll put me real close to that, just so my thread doesn't carry too far in the back or I don't have to stop and make a bunch of knots. So, so these little guys, 
are pretty simple. It's just a stem stitch up the center, and then these are just single little stitches, straight stitches to form the little ferns. So I already did the stem on this, so now I'm just gonna go do these little side stitches. And I start at the outside. Hopefully I'm not making you sick going back and forth. Go to the inside, go to the outside. And there, that one's done. That's how simple those are. Okay, and then I wanted to show you the French knot. So I'm going to make these pink like the flowers. These little dots are French knots. And with the 12 weight, I just wrapped it one time because it's pretty thick. With these two, I'm gonna wrap it three times. So it'll be a little, a little bit bigger of a knot. So what you do, sorry, <laughs> you pull the needle up at the dot you're gonna wrap it three times around the needle, and it's not super tight, you can go up and down. I'm gonna hold it with my finger, just so it doesn't slip off. And I'm gonna put the point of the needle, just a few threads of fabric away from where I began, and then pull on that to bring those wraps down to the fabric, but not super tight. And then with my finger on the back and my thumb, I'm holding that in place and then I'm gonna pull the needle through and I have a little French knot. So I'll do that again. The thread goes up, wrap it three times. One, two, three, hold it in place. Put your needle down really close. Pull the wraps down to the thread. And, oops, pull it through. So once you feel comfortable with that, you can actually bring the needle up at the next one and then pull those wraps down, hold it in place, pull the needle up that way. Now you're ready to go for the next stitch. I pulled that kind of tight. You'd like them to all be about the same size, so I'm gonna loosen that up. Oh, he got a little wonky. That's all right. It's a flower. They're all a little bit different, right? Nothing's perfect in nature. Okay, so now we're going to do these big red circles. And what I did there is an inverted blanket stitch, but if you don't feel comfortable with that, the other option is to just do a little stem stitch or back stitch around the outside and put a little French knot in the middle, whatever you feel comfortable with. But for the inverted blanket stitch, what you'll do is you're gonna start on the outside, pull your needle up. You're gonna carry your thread on the outside of the circle. You take your needle down in the very center and you can do these so they're touching and it just fills it in real solid. You can do it so there's like little spokes. I'm gonna make mine like a 16th of an inch apart. The thread's gonna go under the needle and I'm gonna pull it away from the center. I don't want, if I pull it this way, then that's gonna fall in. So I wanna pull it away and there's one. Now I'm gonna go back in that same center hole, move over just a little bit, thread behind and pull and just continue that all the way around. You don't want to pull it too tight or it'll kind of pucker because it's kind of a big stitch. Sometimes this is the type of stitch where I might use a hoop just so that it will lay nice and flat and I don't accidentally pull it too tight, but I'm trying to be really careful here so it should be okay. You just keep turning your fabric. And 
and you're always going down in that exact same hole in the center. It gets a little thick in there, but it is it is doable. Oops. Yeah, that's kind of a big jump between, but I'm going to do it anyway. There we go. And then at the end, you're just going to put your th needle on the other side of that loop and kind of tack it in place. That will hold it there. There, so now we have our little French knot flowers and our circle flowers and some of the leaves done. So we'll continue on and then I've got a really cute way of doing these bees that's really simple. So I'll show you that next. So now we have this little bee right here. I stitched this one up so you can see what he's gonna look like. And I decided to go with this floss. Let me get the out here it's a Cosmo it's kind of like a really dark gray and that's what I decided to do the house into here also and I did want to point out I did change some of my colors um, the pink was a little too pink so I took out what I had done before and I put in this really soft pink which I really like and I think I switched out which orange that I was going to use too but so these are the colors I'll put on or that are on the email that you got okay so to make this little bee it's actually super easy so it's a series of fly stitches which is kind of ironic because it's a bee and then these running stitches and these running stitches are also what the roof line is made out of too so what you're going to do is start in the middle of the bee's body all right there I'm going to carry the thread up so it's going to kind of follow his body up around the top I'm going to go on the other side of the bee and then bring my needle up at his head the thread's going to go under the needle and that is called a fly stitch there we go oh, threads a little off again I should make sure that's right before I start showing you. There we go. Now, instead of on a normal fly stitch, what you do is you'd bring the needle down right on the other side and tack it in place. But I'm going to go ahead and just put my needle down up here and form one of the antenna. Or antennae, whatever it is. And then come back and do the other one. And go down inside of the loop. So now we have the top part of his body and his antenna done. Now I can do the bottom part of his body. Oops, let me turn my... And so we're going to come up in the same place where we had started. And now I'm going to do the bottom of the bee. So back over to the other side, down to the bottom. And now I'm going to, instead of coming down right on the other side, I'm going to go out just a little bit and that will be the stinger. And now I can continue on with the running stitch, which is just up, down, just like we did inside the leaf, the leaves. Up, down, up, down. One more. Now, I want to come back up here to do the wings. So what I am going to do is turn it over and thread my needle under some of those stitches, just so that it doesn't get snagged up on anything and it'll look a little bit nicer. Okay, now we're gonna do the wings, and the wings are exactly the same way. So, let's see, we'll start here, in the middle of the body. Go to the other side of the wing, come to the tip of the wing. The thread's gonna go under the needle. Now this time we will put the needle down right on that, outside of that loop. And then I'm gonna come up for the other wing Okay, and I'm going to move across the body and we'll do the other set of wings.
Isn't that easy? And then once we get the wings done, the last thing that we need to do is to make the stripes. And that's done with just a few satin stitches. So first I'll start with the head. So I'm just gonna take a few stitches right up close to the head. You really only will need like just a couple to form that. And then I'll go to the middle and do that middle B stripe. And do one on that side, one on this side. Oops, I caught that. And then I'm gonna pop down and do that last stripe at his rear end. There, and now we have the finished B. So now it is all done. Look at that. Isn't that fun? I think it turned out great. I like it. I think I might do some others colored in too because that was so much fun to do. So I hope you had fun doing this one. I can't wait to see your pictures. Make sure you post them and tag me so I can see them. I don't want to miss them. And uh, we'll see you next month.